everybody hope you all are fine the topic of discussion for today is the intercostal spaces this topic has been divided into two parts at the end of the part 1 the participant should be able to define intercostal space describe the boundaries and enlist the contents of intercostal spaces tabulate and describe the intercostal muscles with regard to their origin direction of fiber insertion and their role in respiratory movement and also explain the neurovascular bundle in an intercostal space during part 2 we will discuss the intercostal arteries intercostal vein a zygous system of veins typical and atypical intercostal nerves and lymphatic drainage of intercostal spaces and at the end of the part 2 we will be able to correlate some of the interesting clinical condition in the area of thorax intercostal spaces are anatomical spaces present among adjacent ribs of the thoracic cage they are numbered according to the ribs forming the superior border as there are 12 ribs on each side there are 11 intercostal spaces on each side the space below the 12th rib on each side is named as subcostal space as regard the boundaries of a typical intercostal space it is bounded above by lower border of upper rib and the costal cartilage below by upper border of lower border lower rib and the costal cartilage anteriorly it is bounded by lateral border of the sternum and posteriorly by the body of the corresponding vertebra as regard the contents of the intercostal space they are number 1 intercostal muscles that is external internal and intimi intercostal muscles number 2 neurovascular bundle comprising intercostal vessels arteries and veins and their collaterals and intercostal nerves and their collaterals and lastly the lymphatics and lymph nodes now we start with the intercostal muscles first the external external intercostal muscles each muscle extends from to buckle of a rib behind to costochondral junction in front and anterior to costochondral junction each muscle is replaced by external intercostal membrane each muscle in each space originate from lower border of upper rib and is inserted onto the upper border of lower rib the fibers of external intercostal muscle in each space from posterior to anterior they travel downward and lateral laterally in the posterior part downwards and anteriorly in the lateral part and downward and medially in the anterior part because of the twisted and bending nature of the ribs these muscles elevate and open the ribs hence increase the transverse diameter of the thorax hence they aid in quiet and forced respiration second group of intercostal muscle is internal intercostal muscle these are located deep to external intercostal muscles and extend from lateral border of sternum anteriorly to posterior angle of the rib posteriorly beyond the posterior angle of the rib it is replaced by internal intercostal membrane in a space 
internal intercostal muscle originate from floor of the costal groove of groove of upper rib and is inserted onto the upper border of the lower rib the direction of the fibers in the anterior part is infrolateral in the middle or lateral part it is infro inferiorly and posteriorly directed whereas in the posterior part the fibers are directed inferiorly and medially internal intercostal muscle depress and bend ribs inward hence decreases transverse diameter of the thorax it also aid in forced expiration and we already know that quiet expiration is a passive process third group of muscle is innermost intercostal muscle which is composed of three parts sternocostalis intercostal intimi and subcostalis muscle first the sternocostalis muscle we can see in both the diagram that this muscle is present in the anterior part of the thoracic cavity in in the shape of several slips this muscle originates from the posterior surface of lower one third of the body and z5 process of the sternum plus adjacent costal cartilages fibers in the shape of slips travel upward and laterally and get inserted into costal cartilages of the ribs second to sixth sternocostalis is innervated by intercostal nerves and this muscle help during forced breathing and support thoracic cage during the breathing process second part of inter innermost intercostal muscle is subcostalis which is located in lower and posterior part of the thoracic wall in the shape of multiple slips each slip originate from inner surface of one rib near its posterior angle fibers travel inferiorly and medially just similar to internal intercostal and get inserted to a rib 2 to 3 level below its origin they are innervated by intercostal nerves and can depress ribs during forced expiration and also support the intercostal spaces contents and the thoracic cage third part is intercostal intimi which is located in middle of each intercostal space deep to internal intercostal in each space they originate from medial edge of costal groove deep to internal intercostal fibers travel downward and posteriorly just similar to internal intercostal and get inserted on the medial lip of the upper border of the rib below they are innervated by intercostal nerves and can depress ribs during forced expiration and they also support the intercostal spaces contents and thoracic cage as is the case with subcostalis muscle neurovascular bundle of an intercostal space has got two main components number one main neurovascular bundle which runs in the costal groove in a sequence of vein artery and nerve from top to bottom second main component is collateral neurovascular bundle which runs just above the lower rib in a sequence of nerve artery and vein from superior to inferior both these bundles run in the neurovascular plane 
which lies between inner intercostal and innermost intercostal muscles. In addition to neurovascular bundle, lymph channels and lymph nodes are also present in each space. To be continued as the part two of the present topic.